Well, hello everybody. I am excited. It is time to get into the real powerful aspects of our Shearwater computers. They are so cool. I cannot wait to explain this to you. Petrol 3, Perdix 2. They all have these settings. Where are we headed? We're going to right click, right click, right click, right click, right click. Yeah, we have lots of stuff to get through, but that's for later on many more of these settings. Oh, I just missed it. Gradient factor 99 is where we're at it, everybody. So let me keep clicking. Boom, boom, boom. GF 99 and surface gradient factor. Here we go. Just so you see, is all I'm doing is right clicking. Everybody has this. GF 99 surface gradient factor. It's awesome. Okay, that's all nice. What is it? How does it work? Why is it important? It's time to get into this in a very big way. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to discuss, and I'm going to film myself in the mirror discussing this because I want you all to get various different images as I'm discussing all of this. Images. So there are two displays that are unbelievable information on your Shearwater computers. These are game changers and they absolutely improve safety. GF99 and surface gradient factor. GF99 gives you real time gradient factor exactly what your gradient factor really is at that particular point in the ascent. Unbelievable, and I'll show you why, right? It's real-time information on what's happening with the nitrogen dissolved inside your body. And they give you, they empower you to make these informed decisions about the ascents and your safety stops that reduce the risk of DCS. And for those of you that are diving on the liveaboard a lot, you get that fatigue from decompression stress from that nitrogen buildup. It helps reduce that. It's awesome. Okay. Real-time relationship between the pressure of the nitrogen dissolved within your body and the ambient pressure surrounding you. That's GF99 technically defined. I'm going to break it down to make it much more simpler to understand. It's your real-time gradient factor, and we want to be at a level where I can affect how much bubbling I want to happen, like a speedometer of my bubbles in my body, such that I can figure out and see in real time what my surface gradient factor will be when I get to the surface. A gradient factor speedometer, man. This is amazing. Okay, so let's read some of the stuff that Andy talks about. 0%, if your GF99 says 0%, nitrogen isn't entering or exiting your body. If it's 1 through 49%, you're having less amount of bubbles and smaller bubbles coming out of solution. So you're ascending at a rate that is less and smaller bubbles. If that GF99 is reading 50 to 100, that's more larger bubbles. And by the way, 100 is the M value. So this is telling you how close are you to that M value. We don't want to be at 100 because if it's greater than 100, by the way, if you exceeded that M value, I love this. He says, call an ambulance. You're probably going to be bent. Okay. So gradient pressure difference increases the risk of bubble formation. Greater pressure difference increases the risk. But you have to have a pressure differential, don't you? That's what he talks about. If you don't have a pressure differential, no bubbles will come out. When you go up, 
you're having a pressure differential, less pressure as you come up. So the bubbles come out of solution, but we're trying to gauge the speed of that. There's a GF 99 of 30%. That means I'm 70% away from the M value. And this means if I was to come to the surface right now from this depth, I would have an 80% gradient factor when I reach the surface. And the aim here of diving in general is to achieve this optimal balance between those two factors. You want to release as much nitrogen as possible, get it out of your body before surfacing, but you don't want to cause those to come out too quickly or to be too big. And during the dive, the GF99 display lets you know whether you're absorbing or releasing nitrogen. This is awesome. It allows you, it tells you how efficiently you're off-gassing and the decompression stress being created. Are you going to be really, really tired when you come up or even possibly bent? So a higher GF99 means you're closer to that M value, right? That means your, your, your nitrogen is coming out quicker. So your goal should be to remove as much nitrogen as possible before surfacing from your dive. However, that higher value also suggests more micro bubbles are going to be created in your body and too many of those can be post-dive fatigue, that tired feeling in between dives. How do we control it? Let's look at it quicker, uh, further. I love this. Look, GF99. So when it is displaying a on gassing, that means you're absorbing nitrogen. So you click that, that, that button, that right button on your shear water. Am I on gassing? According to this, I am. Typically, when you're going down, that's what you're going to see. I'm on gassing. Now, GF99 of 0%. When the gradient factor 99 indicates 0%, you are at the point of saturation. The pressure of nitrogen inside your body matches the ambient water pressure surrounding you. Okay? You're at 0%. You are saturated. Super saturation. The GF99 display indicates when your body is releasing nitrogen. Higher percent means better off gassing efficiency going beyond 100% seriously risks getting bent. So it's your speedometer. I'm moving up towards that M value. 100% you're at the M value, right? So here I'm at 30%. Now, if my low gradient factor was set to 30 at the deepest point in my dive, that means the slowest gas is, is basically going to be reading here when you set your low gradient factor such that if I'm at a 30 at my lowest point of the dive, that means my slowest tissue cannot take on any more supersaturation because that's what I set it to and it would stop me. Remember, the low gradient factor controls your deep stop, your deepest point in the dive. So there's my speedometer. I can tell exactly what my gradient factor is at any point in the dive. And if I was to come to the surface directly from this point, I would surface at an 80 gradient factor. Does that exceed your high setting? Then it wouldn't let you surface. I don't dive with a high gradient factor above 70. So I would not be able to go to a surface, to the surface if that said 80, it would stop me. Continuing, so awesome. In this example, gradient factor 99 is 70%. So I'm 30% below the end value and I'm off gassing rather quickly. However, this amount of pressure differential will provoke micro bubbles and you may experience post dive fatigue. This means that I have 30% conservatism. 
I'm 30% away from the M value. This gets into Andy's rules of thumbs, which I love. A lower gradient factor 99 to 42% would be approximately half of your preset gradient factor high. And that's what he is saying that he likes. It limits the creation of micro bubbles. It's nonetheless an efficient speed of nitrogen removal. It's a nice balance. So he is saying basically move up to where your gradient factor 99 is approximately half of the gradient factor high setting and that is an ideal max before you have to make a stop. Does that make sense? So you can watch this in real time. I'm moving up, moving up such that this is about half of whatever you set that high gradient factor to. That's an ideal speed, an ideal depth such that you are off gassing at a really, really good level, but not too fast because you don't want that decompression stress. Now, he goes on to talk about what is the surface gradient factor. That is the display that lets you know what the pressure difference would be if you immediately went to the surface from where you are right now. And as you become more accustomed to using it, he says it allows ever more refined decisions during your dive. That is what we are going to talk about next. We are going to talk about the surface gradient factor and the relationship between GF99 and the surface gradient factor. Because why are we going to talk about that? For you recreational divers, you may think by being at 15 feet or 20 feet is the perfect place for your safety stop. Is it really? Are you even off gassing at that point? Are you going to lower your surface gradient factor in a meaningful way by being at 15 or 20 feet? I don't know. But this baby will tell me by reading GF99 and then looking at how it's affecting your surface gradient factor, you can know whether or not maybe you want to move up to 10 feet and get closer to that 42%, half of your high gradient factor, and watch that surface gradient factor drop. Maybe you don't want to come to the surface at what your high gradient factor is set to. Maybe that day you're feeling tired and you want to be even more conservative. So you move up to a level and it'll show you exactly what your surface gradient factor is. That's next. Can't wait to discuss the relationship between gradient factor 99 and surface gradient factor. I love you. You're beautiful. I can't wait to dive with you again. I'm sorry for the long surface interval. Oh man, there are so many great pieces of information in this baby. See you soon.